All right, so I'll start by apologizing for the fact that the air conditioning is on today. Go figure why. Uh, but it is what it is. At least you guys are only here for three hours. I will have been here for six hours, and I'll be shaking over here because it's so cold. <laughs> anyway, um, I have no idea why they can't figure out that air conditioning at this time of year is not the right solution. But anyway, I have complained, and maybe someday they'll fix it. <laughs> But we'll see. Um, moving on to more important things. You've got two handouts today. The first one is your assignment 202, which is your next assignment for the class. And for assignment 202, we're going to work with uh, topography. We'll, we'll work with a piece of land. And ultimately, it's really important for you guys to learn how to take Rhino and make it into something that's actual physical 3D object. So as part of this, you will use the laser cutter. Most of you are already familiar with the laser cutter. And I will teach you the strategy for making something like this that's really easy. It does not require lots and lots of sheets because it's hollow, which is good. Uh, it actually is only one or two sheets, depending on how you, how you cut it. Uh, but it'll take us a few days to get there. There are two parts to this assignment. The first part is due on March 15th. And that is your AutoCAD file for your laser cut. Then the physical cardboard model is due March 27th, which is the week before spring break. So you won't have to worry about it over spring break, which is a good thing. Okay? Uh, you will be building a physical model. As part of that, you will need a few basic modeling supplies, including the cardboard, which they usually sell at the bookstore. We'll make sure that it's stocked, or at least hope that it's stocked. Um, I will also spend a day actually with a laser cut file showing you how to glue it together so you'll learn the full strategy for how this stuff works. Anyway, I have two previous samples. You're welcome to look at them and see them, but this is where we're going with this part of it. And the reason that I emphasize actually making something out of Rhino is I want you to have the experience of physically creating an object, uh, not just working virtually. After we build this, we're going to move into purely virtual renderings and that sort of thing, and you won't actually build anything. I used to make you, uh, the students, build this and the skyscraper, which is the next one, but we just do renderings now, so you get, you get off the hook a little bit easier. Um, but that's okay. This is still a good project. Um, craft matters. How you glue it together, how clean it looks, those kinds of things do matter as part of this. They'll be part of your grade. So. Um, if the corners overlap or they don't meet up nicely, those are the things that are going to drop your grade down. And so just be aware of that going forward. I will, of course, walk you through how to do it all so that you can, you can see me do it. These two are good examples. I believe they both got 100%. Um, generally, it's not one where I fine tune the grading by percentage. It's, it's kind of basic percentage points. So if you do really well, you can get 100 on this one kind of thing. Um, and if you don't do so well, it's going to be down in the 70s. Okay, So that's where we're going with assignment 202. The next piece is exercise 211, which, guess what? We're starting with topography. So um, when we work on topography in Rhino, we are going to pull the basic topographic data from SketchUp. And that's how we're going to create our topography. And it's going to let you pick a place that may be important to you, maybe not. Uh, to model the topography. So we're going to use SketchUp to create it. You don't have to use SketchUp. SketchUp is by no means perfectly accurate, <laughs> but it will give us an approximation of the topography. If we were doing this in practice, if we, were, if we actually had a real built site, we would get our survey data from our civil engineer who did the actual topographic survey. We'd have his information or her information, and we'd bring that into Rhino and build this using the same method. Unfortunately, because I don't have surveys of everything, we're going to pick something from Google, um, and that's going to be our, our approximation of it. So um, we are, for the one and only time, no, <laughs> maybe not quite, we're going to open SketchUp first today. Uh, so let's open up SketchUp. By the way, I believe our license is for SketchUp 2016 on these computers. It is not critical whether we have 2016 or 2017. If you do this at home on your home computer, that you can use 2017. It may, doesn't really make any difference. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and under the template, I'm going to choose the architectural design feet and inches. 
and then I'll go ahead and start using SketchUp. And there we go. There's SketchUp. Yes, there's a new version, but no, I don't want to upgrade. Uh, we can get rid of the, the little person here. We don't need her. She can go away. And then what we're, what, what's important at this point is we need to bring in the geolocation data. Um, and that's something that's built into SketchUp. It's actually one of the better features of SketchUp uh, that's available to us. If we go to the File menu, we can go to Geolocation and then Add Location. And this then brings up, we hope, the add location little dialog box here. And it lets us find a specific location. And what we're looking for is something that is rather hilly or valley-y, uh, rather steep, but not too steep. If you, I used to have people pick Yosemite, and everybody would pick like Half Dome, and it's like a sheer cliff. Well, that doesn't help us in this modeling process. We need something a little bit easier to model. Uh, so I've found that actually searching on, uh, like in Hawaii, is not a bad place because there's some pretty good pieces. I got that idea from Rebecca. This is Hawaii, as I drop it. This is Hawaii, so it has some nice valleys and, and that sort of thing. So I'm going to do an attempt to, to go look in Hawaii. So let's look at Maui. And we'll zoom out a little bit. When we zoom out, in this location field. The other thing, a couple things. One, I made this much bigger so that I can see more. By default, we get this little tiny square, you know, something like that. Go ahead and make it bigger so you give yourself a little bit more um, work. And the other part here is that it's limited and will only take terrain in a certain size. So there's our little square. That's as much terrain as we can take. Um, and so let's move over here. I'm looking for something with some valleys in it. Something like that could be kind of interesting. And as we zoom in, like I said, the square is the maximum that we can take. But as we zoom in, we can control a little bit more carefully what we take. It doesn't matter to me how large of an area you take. Generally, it's going to be fairly large if it's coming from Google Earth. We're just going to work with it as part of this, this um, exercise. So there it is. I kind of like it. When, I, when I'm happy, I'm going to click on the Select Region button. And I'll get these little pins in the corners that lets me grab the region. And I'll go ahead and click on the Grab button. And when I click on the Grab button, I will get a flat image in SketchUp that looks something like that. I'd like to see it and make sure that it's not too steep or too weird before I move on. So I will go to the File menu, and under Geolocation, I'm going to click on Show Terrain. And that then shows me what it looks like. OK, this looks pretty good. I've got a little bit of valley. It's kind of exciting. All right, we'll go with it. So there's my image. I probably should have gotten rid of that little banner, but such is life. I should have dismissed that. There it is. Now I want to be able to bring it into SketchUp. And on my, my little handout that I gave you, um, it does say to save it as a SketchUp 7 file. We don't have to go back that far anymore. We can save it as a SketchUp 2013 file. So I'm going to go to File and then Save As. And under SketchUp Models, we're going to go back in time to SketchUp version 2013. It's possible that Rhino's updated and will take the newer versions, though usually it's a few versions back because SketchUp has a tendency to update every year and the formats change slightly. Uh, we're going to go back to 2013. I know that one works. So we'll go back to 2013. And let's call this Hawaii Topography. And I want to make sure that it goes to my flash drive into today's folder. And I have other Hawaii's in here. Uh, let's do a new folder for today. This is the spring of 2017. And we'll go ahead and save that right there. OK, so I have that saved as a SketchUp file. I can now close SketchUp, and I can move back into Rhino. So let's double click on Rhino and open that up. All right, so Rhino's open. 
I have to make sure that my SketchUp units match my Rhino units. So remember I did feet and inches in SketchUp. That equates to inches in Rhino. So my units are in inches in this new document there. And as long as that's the case, I can go to File and then Import. So remember previously we did Insert or Insert Block Instance. This time we're just importing. So we're taking the whole file and bringing it in. I'll go to File and then Import. And I'm going to go to my flash drive. I'm going to go into my today's folder. And there's my Hawaii topography. I'll go ahead and say open. And I get the SketchUp or SKP import options. I want it to come in as a mesh. And the rest of these options will all be fine. I'll go ahead and say OK. And when I do that, I'm going to have to zoom out a bit to see the terrain. So there it is. And I can see it as a mesh. I can switch into shaded mode to see what's there. So SketchUp brings in two things. One is a flat plane. This was the picture of the, the topography before I said show terrain. This was the actual topography that came in. It is a mesh file which is not ultimately what we're going to want. We want a NURBS file, which is a standard Rhino surface. Um, this mesh file is made up of a bunch of little triangles. And so if we look at, let's say, that ridge, see it has a hard time actually making the ridge because of that, those triangulations. So we have these weird little depressions as we go up the, the ridge. Similar thing happens in the middle of a valley. Right? If we're looking up here, there's these weird little steps that occur as part of the valley. So this is fine as an approximation, but it's not quite as smooth and as nice as real topography would be. So we're going to talk about how to make this into good, nice topography that we can work with in Rhino. And that's the bulk of what we'll be doing today. This, by the way, is all written out on the course website. If you go under tutorials, if we go to Rhino, I forget the number, it says on your handout, 5.23 SketchUp Topography. This will walk through exactly what I'm going to be doing today. So here's my nice piece of terrain that we're going to start to work with. I'm going to turn off my gumball so it's not distracting. And now I'm going to start to break this down into component pieces and then ultimately be able to uh, create some new surfaces from it. So let's take a look at my layers first. I have some layers that don't really matter included in here. I have a layer 0, which is actually my SketchUp terrain. So I'm going to change this and call this SketchUp mesh. I have a Google Earth terrain that doesn't have anything on it, so let's get rid of that layer. I have a Google Earth snapshot. Let's get rid of that too. I have layers 1 through 5. Let's get rid of all them. And now I have just SketchUp mesh and default layer. I'm going to rename default layer to be contour x. And I'm going to make sure it's the current layer, which it is. So with contour x selected, I'm going to use the contour command in the x direction. And so the contour command, we can get to uh, curve, curve from objects, contour, right there. And this works, contours are a lot like what we would think of as topo lines on a map. But we're going to use them slightly differently. What it is is it's a series of parallel lines that go across the surface. So it's going to say first to select objects for contours. So I want to contour this mesh. And I'll go ahead and hit Enter. Then it says contour, base, uh, contour plane base point. We'll just pick one corner of our, of our uh, surface here. And I want to turn on both knot and vertex on my object snaps, which will allow me to actually snap to that corner right there. So there it is. I've clicked on one corner. Then it's going to say direction perpendicular to the contour planes. This is, if you just read direction perpendicular to the contour planes, it doesn't make a lot of sense. But essentially, what it's asking for is it wants one of the standard directions. It wants the x direction, it wants the y direction, or it wants the z direction. And it depends on how your contours are going to be cut. We're, because this is contour x, we're going to go in the x direction here. So I'm going to go off in space in the x direction. I want to make sure that I don't snap to anything. I want to be way off over here so that I'm just right along that x-axis. I'm not snapping to anything. 
like that. Yeah. Uh, just, uh, Turn on not and vertex in your object snaps. Okay, so it's way off there in space. Then it's going to ask for a distance between contours. Now, this is how many feet are in between each line that I'm creating. And generally speaking, on a, on a piece of topography that's this big, we're looking at maybe 50 feet or 100 feet. And I'm going to go ahead and do it at about 100 feet and see what happens. So I'll type 100 feet, and then I'll press Enter. And you'll see that it will then slice up my surface with a bunch of parallel lines that go right along the surface. Pretty cool. So once I have those, I'm going to create another new layer, and we're going to call this Contour Y. These layers, by the way, ultimately I'm going to delete. So it doesn't really matter, but it helps if you label them because when you're creating these objects, you'll get lost. So let's move from Contour X to Contour Y as my active layer. And now when I do the contour, it's really important that I deselect the, the lines and contour the surface, not the lines. If you contour the lines, you will get a bunch of points. And I'll do that next so you can see what happens. That's not what you want. So let me go ahead and show you what, is, what we do want, and then I'll do what we don't want. We're going to go back to the surface, or excuse me, curve, curve from objects, contour. Select objects for contours, my surface, enter. Same base point right there. But this time we're going off in the Y direction. Distance between contours, 100 feet or 1,200 inches. And there I have the contours going in the opposite direction. So if I were to turn off the SketchUp mesh now, we'd see that I have a bunch of curves going in one direction and the other direction. Sound familiar? Curve network? So we're going to build a surface using a curve network out of these curves. So let me show you what, really quick, let me turn off. I'm going to create a temporary layer here. I'm going to turn off those. And I'm going to show you what would happen if I were to contour the, the lines instead. So let me go ahead and select those lines. There we go, there's the lines. If I were to contour, base point, right there, we're going off in the Y direction, 100 feet, I'd end up with all these little points. Some of you will have this happen to you. Right? So when you have all those little points, that's not what we wanted. If we were to turn off the surface, you'd see that we have lines with points on them. No good. So if you did it by mistake and you happen to deselect them, you can type SELPT for select point. It will select all of them, and you can press the delete key, and they'll go away. Then you will recontour based on the surface instead of the points. So now that I have contours in X and in Y, I'm going to create a new layer, and we'll call this terrain. And I'll make that the active layer. Now, we've done curved networks before when we did the organic shapes. This will work the same way. We have curves in the x and the y direction. But along the edge here, we have a bunch of ragged edges. And curve networks don't like the ragged edges. We have two options. The first option would be to actually draw a curve. And we'd have to use this curve, which is the interpolate points curve, along the edge, snapping to our endpoints. essentially creating a new curve along the edge. To me, that's way too much work. But you could do it if you wanted to. So instead, we're going to look at this in the top view. Notice that this should be perfectly x and y. If you get lines that are leaning, something went wrong. Better to do it again. And so with that, I'll go ahead and use some trims here. So we'll type trim. And the good news about Rhino is we can trim all of it at once. There's one trim. Let me trim from this one. Get rid of all those. Let me trim from this one. There. And we'll trim this last one over here. This side is much more difficult to trim. And you'll, you'll discover this. You kind of have to do it in smaller batches.
especially when you get down here because they're just so small. All right, so all of those I've trimmed. And if I look down on this, I now have a perfect rectangle with curves that go around the outsides of it. When I have that, I can then take this nice network of curves. Let me select them all. And I'll go up to curve, or excuse me, surface curve network, or type network surface. And assuming I did it correctly, we'll end up with um, an A, B, C, and D. The rest of the defaults are just fine. I'll go ahead and say OK. This will take some time. Could take a couple minutes to, to process through because this is the most complicated surface that you've ever actually created. So we'll let it work for a little bit. Bear with me. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea to save it before you did the curve network, just in case. OK, so it did finish. It didn't take too long. And when it creates it, you'll notice that Rhino will get extraordinarily sluggish. And that's because of the complexity of this one surface. So if we zoom in, it will slowly jump in. And if I were to try to select the surface, it will show up as a big yellow block, not the traditional surface that we're looking at. And that is because it's just too dense. If I were to continue to zoom in here a little bit, eventually you'd start to see the U and the V grid that we're used to seeing on the surface itself. But it's a very, very dense surface. So we can safely rebuild this surface. So I'm going to type in rebuild. And we're going to start with our point count here. Generally speaking, I would say 100 by 100. And then I'll go ahead and say OK. And when I do that, suddenly Rhino's not sluggish anymore. And my surface is still pretty close to being accurate. I'm going to turn off my x and y. And we can look at this particular piece of surface. This is now a Rhino surface. It's a NURB surface. It's defined by math. It's much better than a mesh because we have some more flexibility. But if I were to look at the ridges, for example, it's definitely smoother in the valley here, but I still have some weirdness going on. So I want to show you what Rebuild does as we work through this, this surface. So I'm going to create a couple versions of this surface. Let me copy it in place. You don't have to do this. I just want to be able to show you. So let me create a new layer for terrain 2. And let me change object layer. So I have terrain 2. Let me copy it one more time. Copy, oops, in place. And then we'll do one more layer here, terrain 3. And I'm going to change object layer. Uh, I'm going to change terrain 2 and 3 to be different colors. With the hope that they'll be seen. OK, so we have our first one right here. That's our standard terrain. I'm going to turn on terrain 2, which we can see here. And I'm going to take that, and I'm going to rebuild it again. And when I rebuild it again, let's try. 50 by 50. And when I do it, we can compare the two. That's why I left them on top of each other. And you can see that it's an approximation. So in some places, as it smooths out, the surface gets higher. In some places, the surface gets lower. But if we were to look in the valley, for example, let me turn off this terrain. It's gotten much, much smoother and is reading much more like a valley. And we're seeing far fewer of those little triangulated artifacts. So this is an approximation. It's not quite as accurate, but it's giving me a slightly better, smoother surface. So to me, this is probably the one that I would continue working on from here. 
However, we could take it a step further. Let me turn on terrain three, and I'm gonna rebuild terrain three even further. So I'm gonna rebuild, and this time I'll do 10 by 10. And I'll say okay. And as we look at it now, we can see that there's some spots that it really smoothed out. So for example, there's this valley. In the really smooth version, that valley doesn't exist at all. It smoothed it too much. So there's pushing it too far. So there's kind of a fine balance. I find that 100 by 100 doesn't change too much. We can still see the facets. And you can see that. Let me turn off that. You can still see the facets in that. Let me create one new layer so that I can switch between these. So there are still a little bit of facets in the valleys, just a bit. You can see the artifacts there, there, there. The 50 by 50 here is a little bit smoother, much fewer of those little artifacts, still just the whisker. And to me, the 10 by 10, this final one, was just way too smooth. We lost too much detail. So you got to find whatever the happy medium is. And it may take you a few tries of rebuilding to kind of sort out which one feels, feels right. To me, I think the, uh, in terms of moving forward, I think I'll use this one, the 50 by 50. It's accurate enough for what I'm trying to do. So now that I've created a surface out of this, I'm going to go ahead and contour it again with, so that I could see what it would look like um, with one more contour, but this time I'll do it in the Z direction. So this will be like typical map topo lines. So let me go ahead and I'll go new layer for topo lines. Make that active. And I'm going to contour this object. So contour, base point is the same right there at the end. But this time, instead of going in the x direction or in the y direction, I'm going to go in the z direction. So I'm going to go straight up. So there it is. And it's easiest to do it from one of the side views. So I'll go straight up, and I'll type my distance. Instead of maybe um, you know, 100 feet, in this case, maybe I'll do 5 feet. So I'll type 5 feet, and I'll hit Enter. And we can watch it build those 5-foot contours. And this is what you would typically see on like a topo map or something like that. Maybe five feet was a little aggressive. I might be getting a few too many lines here. But it's kind of fun to watch it build it anyway. So what I was able to create with that contour was what would look like a complete map of the contours of this particular piece. We can see how steep they are, etc. There is an art to picking what the contour interval was going to be. We will pick that up next class as we continue to work through creating a physical model. For today, um, we can pick an ar arbitrary 5 feet, 10 feet, 40 feet, whatever feels right to you. Um, in this case, it was probably a little dense. Let me try it one more time. This. Base point straight up. Um, let's do it at 20 feet. Much better. Not quite so dense. There we go. So these contours could be useful to us if they were flat. So I'm going to do one last thing. I'll create a new layer, and we'll call this topo flat. And on that topo flat layer, I'm going to draw a surface. I'm doing that in the top view. And I'm going to project, select surfaces to project that surface. And I'm going to project all those lines so that they end up flat. Notice that I did the projection in the top view. And if we were looking at it in the perspective view, there are all my contours in a flat map-like setting. So at that point, I can take these lines, and I can go to File, Export, Selected. And instead of a Rhino file, we can go into AutoCAD, which would be what we'd be able to cut with. So we'll make it an AutoCAD file. I'll call this Hawaii Topo. And it's a DWG. We'll put it into today's folder. And I'll go ahead and click on Save. 
2004 polylines are fine. I'll say OK. And that's then a, an AutoCAD file. This is not by any means a scaled, ready to go to the laser cutter AutoCAD file. We will get to that point, and I will walk you through that step by step. I just want you to, at least in the first day, see this process. And you will see me over the next three or four lectures actually do from SketchUp all the way through to the end each day. So you'll see me repeat this many times. And that's the idea so that you get more and more practice. This seems to take, this, this amount of information seems to take everybody about today in terms of time. And you'll get, you'll get faster at it as we go forward. So once you're done at this point, go ahead and play around. Build yourself a little thing on the, the, on the topography, a meditation pavilion, pavilion a, a giant bridge, uh, whatever it is that you feel like doing. Have some fun with it uh, once you get there. Obviously, there's lots and lots of layers in here that really don't matter that we can turn off long term. Let me turn on terrain two, turn off that, and we'll create something out of this. I'm not expecting it to be perfectly rendered with grass on it or anything like that. Right, just have some fun, play around with things, but I do really want you to understand the process of converting this SketchUp surface, which is triangulated, into a much smoother, nicer surface. Okay? So that's the process for today, and then we'll pick it up again uh, next class. Are there any questions? No? I know it's a lot to take in. You guys will get it. No problem. Remember, it is all written out in a step-by-step -step thing, and it refers to everything that I did. So it's there. Your contour interval is probably going to be 50 feet or 100 feet when you're doing the X or the Y direction. If it seems too dense, if the squares seem too small, do the larger size. All right?